nobody will tell you that the economy has been uh, what it used to be. It's actually very tough. You have a dollar that is more than 1,400 uh, that in the parallel market. You have energy costs is very high. Like my wife came back, she ran a bakery and she was giving me a lot of uh, exclamations yesterday night. Gas, what, 50 kg for 50,000? This, this, this. She was just exclaiming, you know, on so many things that have changed. So this is a reflection of what is happening. So it's, today's Sunobu Nigeria is bad. It's not that it's bad. It is just a reflection of well, it's the tough, global like you said. economic realities. In fact, if you look at the statistics that was done recently by this uh, Global World Economic Forum, they mentioned some of the countries that are cheapest to live and some of the countries that are the most expensive to, lead, uh, to live in. The top three countries that are the cheapest to live in the world or cities, starting from Pakistan, then you now have India. The third one is Nigeria, globally. So it means despite the fact that we are seeing these things as very hard, it is actually even far better than so many other countries. So we have to just understand that, you see, when the world is organized around an economic arrangement, a centrist economic arrangement that is dependent on dollar, and then the United States is doing everything possible to protect its own dollar too. By rising interest rate, the cost of that dollar will be high across the globe. And this is the situation we're facing. Mm. So it's an international issue. It has nothing to do with national issues. But your wife is complaining. Yeah, of course she has to complain. That's, <laughs> a, that's, that's our reality. So the today's Tunubu's Nigeria is a bad one. It's rough. I'm not sure it is not. I, that's why I'm trying to say it's not Tunubu's Nigeria. It is a global issue. We're talking so, about we are we're not talking about the globe, we're talking about Nigeria, which affects some of us who are living here and the experience that we have. And perhaps if we have a government that is listening, how can they be able to make it better? Because if citizens are not talking, if they are not going to the street to protest, if the citizens are not agitated, the government we think is doing the right thing. No. And that's, that's why I'm asking mm -hmm. whether or not, in your own experience, you think that is just fine. It's a boon. The present situation of the country is just perfect no, from your own view. No, the present situation of the country, it is not going to be categorized as fine. But again, the government is just about implementing its own fiscal year 2024 program. So anybody that will just pass a judgment now is pretty much premature. We have to wait and see what the government is able to deliver 20, January 2024, December 2024. Otherwise, any other judgment will just uh, will just be wrong. Yes, it's not it's not really nice. The economy is tough. The situations are hard for everyone, all of us. But again, let's allow the government to start implementing its program first. Um, economy is just on one hand, and I'm seeing a lot of comments. Uh, for example, on Instagram, Obinzo says, "Quality of life and purchasing power is poor." Please let this man should fear God and speak the truth. They are they are making reference <laughs> to you. <laughs> uh, he has also said that his wife is experiencing it. Uh, but economy is just on one hand; mm. security is another. Yesterday in Ibadan, uh, on the way to Lagos, the um, uh, the kidnap a chieftain of a political party, abduction, kidnapping has been the order of the day. Insecurity. Is uh, on all time high. Um, crime rate is going on, violence in the country. And this is the kind of Tinubu Nigeria that we are experiencing today. What would you say to that? Yes, the insecurity is tough. And the fact that we, it has even uh, directly started affecting the political class because a PDP chairman of Lagos State is not a small person in Nigeria. So the fact that we have this kind of experience, it means that the government needs to do something very drastic in the area of security, which I believe the government is, is actually trying to do as much as possible. The approach to security situations in Nigeria now has been more of a kind of a soft intelligence-driven approach than a hard kinetic approach that has failed over time. So... And most of these things, when you are doing intelligence approach, where you have to gather intelligence, where you now have to deep dive into the community, into the people, into their desires, into their choices, into what led them to this kind of crime, this is not going to be something that you just fix by pressing a button. It has to take some time. So you have to re-engineer the social construct to be able to connect the dot between the point of the person to what to do from the point where the person is on the edge where he is supposed to go and join the criminal gang to start being a crime by preventing him from that so it's like trying to nip the board from the root cause so and with this 
it has to take some time, but it's really, really very drastic. You have a country where thousands or hundreds of people are being killed sometimes, like what happened during the Christmas um, um, uh, Christmas Day event in, in Plateau. This this is very uh, uh, kind of... It still happened a few days ago. Yes, it happens... Uh, yeah, I mean, it still continues a few days ago. Mango. Even after the curfew in Mango. Exactly. So you see, so all those things are serious issues. And it is, it's calling on the stakeholders, the leaders of the country, to shield their differences and come together to try to create a very strong, solid approach. So you don't think there is a failure on the part of government? Uh, there is complete failure when there is no security. When security is bad, it means that the government need to do more to fix the issue. But the so Tinubu government is failing. Is not failing in the at area of all. in the area of security. No, I told you that the approach they are taking is an approach where you need soft intelligence to fix the problem, and that is what we need. That is what, in fact, particularly the Office of National Security Advisor is doing. Malanu Ribado. The challenges we are having from the beginning is that we put military on the front line to fix otherwise civil social problems.